September has historically been the best month for gold prices, so could this time be any different? Or will the month bring good luck for the metal? Joining me today is Frank Holmes, CEO of U.S. Global Investors. Frank, welcome back. Great to be with you, Daniela. So what are some of the biggest risks now that could push gold uh, further down? Or could we see a reversal here and September could bring some good luck? Well, it's, it's all has to do with real interest rates and, and the concern that rates will continue to rise. Um, the last Fed minutes were basically that they're going to peak here and that led to a rally in gold in a blink. And now the thoughts are the economy is doing well, so, it could, so maybe rates will continue to rise. Uh, yeah, that's a, a big jump ball. I do know that uh, China and India continue to be, you know, in particular India, uh, this will be an important month in that gold consumption for that love trade. Uh, and uh, I think that that's what we're really dealing with. But what really amazed me is that when I've looked in history at the interest rate differential of a two-year government bond in the U.S. versus the Canadian dollar. So historically, the Canadian dollar rallies when oil rallies, but this time it hasn't. And I was explaining because the 10-year government bond in the U.S. pays you nothing compared to what the U.S. is paying you. And Japan is 10 basis points, and Europe is 50 basis points. So I'm really amazed the dollar isn't even higher mm. and the gold isn't lower. So I think any type of, like right. we said last time, we get a good, uh, in a blink of an eye. So you, I, so you think gold's doing well despite the current environment. And I know we've spoken about this in the past, Frank, how, how you feel that you know, people just love to hate on the metal. Yes, and, and uh, we're a crowded space in, in shorting. Uh, we see Vanguard getting out of the gold business. I hear that other gold fund groups are looking up uh, basically uh, uh, orphaning uh, all, all those gold investors that went over to Vanguard because they thought cheaper was better, and it's not for both fund performance and being left in the USAA may do that too. There's lots of those rumors running around. So we'll see how it ends. But what we've seen is that the $2 billion of gold stocks being sold by Vanguard as they get out of the space has caused compression in the cash flow and PE ratios that many of the gold stocks look like a screaming buy relative to the S&P 500. I mean, they're cheaper. They have higher free cash flow. They trade a cheaper cash flow multiple. And historically, whenever you've had such a a disparity, you get this huge surge or mean reversion. All right. Frank, finally, besides gold, what are you liking as an investment right now? What do I like as an investment? I think we're also seeing this crypto space also get hammered to it, with fake news. Now, I was reading that the Goldman Sachs CFO said that no, they weren't going to stop their trading desk. And that was just a way to, to, to spoof the market like we've seen in the gold space. So uh, I, I think that that to me looks also quite fascinating. And I think some of these MLPs, which is totally off your avenue, uh, have high dividend pain and some of the tax risks there make it attractive. Uh, but stick with the royalty companies, the gold royalty companies, uh, and I think you'll do well in this space. All right. And buy 24 karat gold jewelry. That's my favorite buy. Before anyone goes and your listeners buy another gold stock, uh, in case they get offside, make sure they buy some 24 karat gold jewelry like Manet has, and your wife or your loved one will get upset with you. Well, I'm a fan. I actually, I actually wear the Manet uh, necklace. So Frank Holmes, thank you so much. And thank you for watching. We'll be back next week.